Hey everybody, we're back trying out a for this particular episode. We're going to be trying a um, different camera setup. For some reason, this camera, if you end up doing an overhead view, it gets confused between landscape and portrait mode. So, yeah, the last two last two videos turned out to be portrait instead of landscape. So. So this hopefully will get you landscape. Um, you can't quite see either end of the guitar anymore. The camera's not up as high away from the bench. Um, I can't see what the camera's filming because the camera's now on the other side of the bench instead of over it. Um, but I can actually lean over the work now and work on it. Like right now I'm leaning over the guitar. So... But anyway, yeah, so we're going to give this a try, see how it goes. Um, now, let's see. Where we're at is everything's more or less strung up. Not quite tuned up, but strung up. Good enough in order to see how things are lining up. And treble side of the nut, I'm going to keep stuff in frame here. Treble side of the nut is a little low. And the bridge, all... All across the board is probably a little high. So I think the next step is going to be to loosen up the strings and pull them back and get them out of the way so that I can remove the nut and add a bit more shim to the treble side. So let me do that. I'll be back. Okay. Got the strings loosened up. And yeah, see there's some, there's the rest. They're all drawn to the side here so that I can get at the nut. Um, I notice though that some of the tuners are a little on the, where are we at here? Yeah, this guy right here for sure. A little on the loose side. So I'm going to go ahead and any of these guys that are loose, I'm going to take the tuner off. I guess, I, yeah, or take the screw out and hit it up with the toothpick, put the screw back in, maybe hit it up with both the toothpick and um, and the drop of CA glue. So let me get these guys nice and squared away. Like this is the one that I did yesterday as I recall. Or was it this one? No, it was this one because this one's in super solid now. And yeah, once again, it's just dealing with this really soft wood. In general, dealing with the soft materials like this is not going to be a big issue. Basically, the basic concept is you've got a hole, you're trying to put a screw or something in it, and the wood around it is so soft that the material is giving as it get as the screw or whatever is put under load. And so basically all you do is you just take that hole and, you know, like putting a post for a fence in the ground. You take it and you pack it with some gravel around it because the ground around the post is soft otherwise. Yeah, so in this case, you're going to pack some hardwood into your hole. And then once you stuff enough material in there and shove the screw down in there a few times, you'll get that area packed up with hard material, harder wood, that'll then hold everything together. And if you hit a situation like I did yesterday with this guy, where part of your softer material actually starts to collapse or go away on you, then you can, you know resort to chemical warfare agents like CA glue in order to in order to stabilize the whole area where you're working. So yeah. Kind of like the same idea as building a solid foundation for the for underneath a building. So so yeah let me go and do a little foundation work on these so to speak. I'll be right back. Okay, so what I'm doing here, let's see, oh, um, I just did this one, and it needed both wood and CA glue, and uh, basically what I'm doing, as you can see here, I've taken the screw out of this one, this guy right here, and I rotated it around out of the way, so there's the hole right there, and I'm just going to take my dikes and cut a little bit of wood of the appropriate length, put it down the hole, put a drop of CA glue over the top, rotate this back around, 
and then come in like this and reinstall the screw and that should take care of it. This one tightened up real nice. This one is the one I did yesterday. This was the one that was like really, really loose. And I'll probably hit all three of these as well. Anything that's not super tight. So I'll probably hit all these three as well. So, um, I guess I can show one. Let's see, give me some wood. wood my hole Hopefully this is not too long in you go come on in in I see you're trying to splinter try this end in there it is and down No, I think it's split on me. Wait a sec, come back here. Did it split? There we go. Now let's go in. Okay, there we go. Nice and packed. CA glue. Just get the top wet a little bit. Rotate it around. Get it lined up with the curve. I want to be right about. So the string's trying to turn it. So try this again. Rotate it around. Get it lined up with the curve. Be right about here. Now I actually have to put some weight behind the screwdriver like you normally do. So now I actually got some serious material to screw into. And that's got it. That thing's in there solid. Okay, that's three down and that one's tight. That's loose. That's loose. Let me get these last two. I'll be right back. If you take a look here, this, where is it? There, see the toothpick? Yeah, that part is extremely bad. I'm actually, the hole is so shallow and so, and so wallowed out that I actually had to glue a toothpick down into it because I couldn't it wasn't like deep enough and and solid enough to put a little bit in and snap it off or cut it off or anything. So I actually had to glue one in, wait for it to dry, and now I'll cut it off. I'll do that a couple times until I've filled all this back in. And then I'll, I might, I'll probably hit it up with a little bit of sandpaper before I go ahead and reinstall the tuner. Yeah, so I did actually have to pull one string off all the way, but no biggie. It'll go back on. It's not like they're locking tuners, so locking tuners, if you ever have to take them apart, you've almost got no hopes of getting the string back on again, so. But anyway, be right back. Here's a trick you may not be aware of, even though you probably are. It's called a sanding stick for when you got to sand in someplace very tight. Basically think of like a popsicle stick with some sandpaper on one side. We're essentially an emery board, so yeah. I'm using the end of the of the protractor here and a little bit of 60 grit. Be right back. 
Okay, they're all in and tight. By the end I was cutting off like two mil long pieces of toothpick and using a pair of tweezers in order to put a drop of glue on the hole and then you drop that little slug in and that'd give you something solid that you could screw into. But yeah, they're all fixed now, so. Moving on. Let's see here. My number five string's gonna flop around now. So, need to remove the nut, put some more shim under this side. Let me uh, get some tools. Okay, so this thing's just held in by the squeeze out from gluing in the shim material under it. I'm going to see if I can just sort of pop it off here with, um, with a small, short, clean chisel. That in camera? Yeah, kind of. does have that shim under there still, which I'd kind of like to leave if I can. I don't know if I can or not, though. Let me, uh, let me get a stand. I'll be right back. Okay, um, I don't really use jigs or rigs or anything. This is the only thing I've got. And all it is, is it's a stand so that you can put it down and then put a guitar inside it and it'll hold the guitar vertically. And it's made wide enough. It's just coming on the camera. Yeah, it's made wide enough that it'll hold a full-size acoustic in it. And for something narrower like this, you just put the guitar in and then grab a couple blocks of wood. Like this. And slip them in behind it, however many blocks you need. And it will hold things in place well enough for you to work on the guitar. Kind of, kind of like this, kind of a thing. There. Okay. So, now it's in there. I mean, it's not like it's clamped in a vise, but it'll hold it upright, and I can, you know, come down here, Slide all this stuff down a little bit. Come here, Mr. Guitar, you go down there. Yeah, so, is this still on camera? I don't see anything over here. Uh-oh. I think it went dark on me. Yeah, it looks like it went dark on me. But yeah, now I can get over here and work on the nuts, so. I'll be back. Okay, I, I got it. It, um, seemed to be on there pretty good. I want to get a string stuck here. Where's the string? There we go. Yeah, it seemed to be stuck on there pretty good. First, I actually ended up bending down the whole back side of this thing, trying to get underneath it. But it's, okay, it's all like bent evenly, more or less. And then uh, I was able to actually pry against the top of the headstock a little bit and just went up, came right off. And yeah, it's, it's super clean too. And it was just held on by a little bit of squeeze out on the ends, it looks like. So, so yeah, that's off. Now I can get some more shims in there and get with the rocker tool 
and get everything straight before I uh, put a dab of glue and put it all back together. So let me get the stand out of the way now that I can lay it down again. I'll be right back. Uh, I could really use a tripod for this phone. But anyway, um, so yeah, I was trying to figure out a good camera and ang angle and everything, but this guitar stand is old and kind of rusty and seized up, seized up. It won't go up and down or adjust in any way. It's just kind of, it's up there and that's it. So, can't get the camera any really, really any closer, easily, unless I want to tape it back to the three foot um, level and then suspend it off the shelf again, but then the rotation gets confused and you end up with uh, portrait instead of landscape, so, anyway, let's see what we got going here. I was scouting around forever looking for this thing. First I thought it was out and then I thought I'd dropped it. Turned out I'd actually hung it back up where it belonged. That's what you get for cleaning up. Okay, this is this is high on this side. It's touching the third fret and it's not touching the first or the second. So that's a little high. A couple taps with the hammer might take care of that though. And on this side, what do we got going on here? Make sure the strings are out of the way. Don't want them interfering with the measurements. Yeah, this side is low. It's, oh, true. A tenth, two tenths below the fret plane, something like that, so. Um, I think a thin piece of brass on this side, and then, let's see what we got. Go fish, be right back. Okay, I found this thing, and I put it on this side, and checked it, and that brings the treble side up just about to the same height as the bass side. But as you recall, the base side was a little high for my taste, but it's probably not high for most people's tastes. So, I mean, I'm going across like the I'm going across the third, and I've got two, maybe three tenths of a mil clearance at the first on both sides. So that might work. Okay. Yeah, maybe we'll just go there and not worry about trying to get it any lower because of that point we're, you know, splitting millimeters, literally. So, yeah, I think we'll go with this. Let me get a couple drops of super glue. Oh, super glue, super glue, super glue. Stay out of the way. Mr. Shim. Super glue. Don't seize up cap. There we go. Is this working? Yeah, it looks like it's working. Okay, we need a little super glue. There we go. Shim. Yeah, like that. I need a little more super glue. Super glue for the reindeer, little super glue for Santa Claus, little more super glue for Santa Claus.
think. And think. And give that a try. The cool thing is that now you'll have like this little bit of gap in here that you'll be able to get a chisel back in underneath to pop this thing back off easily next time it's time for some nut work. That's always the mark of a good design is something that's easy to repair. Something that is given like zero consideration in automotive design. Hello spot. How's my beautiful snow leopard? Did you come to check on your favorite pillow? It's getting there. We have a level nut now. It is getting there. Let's slide this thing up a little. Okay. Let that set. And don't rub against it, baby. Come on, over here. There we go. Good boy. All right, let me let this dry for a minute. Get my little pet leopard here off of the cat. Off. Well, he's probably safe. He's really good around the guitar. So, um, right. Let's see. That's glued up. Down at this end, the tuners are tight. Um, right. The bridge is high. Okay. So yeah, let me let this dry for a minute or two. I'll go ahead and put the strings back in line and such. And we'll see where the bridge is at now. So, be back in a minute. Okay, um, got the strings tightened back up. They're not quite tuning tension, but they're close. Um, bridge is back on it. I uh, checked neck alignment this way. It's looking good. Um, I think the next step is going to be slap a tuner on it. And actually bring it up to tune tension in order to figure out get this thing exactly loaded up to, t to proper tension 76 pounds or whatever it turns out to be when it's tuned up so this is fully loaded on this joint here and see exactly where we're at, at the action right now it's looking highish it's about oh oh shoot Approaching three mil, somewhere around three mil. So yeah, that's at least double what it should be, if not triple. So yeah, let me uh, let me get a tuner on this thing. Be right back. Okay, I've got it tuned up and actually a little sharp in order to put it under just slightest amount of extra tension. Also to help stretch out the strings. Um, that's the kind of action we're looking at. That's probably almost, shoot, four millimeters now. And uh, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but they're starting to get a little bit of curvature, like right in this area here. So, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by getting some of this material, which is about five mil, and using it as a feeler gauge in order to figure out whether it's safe to take all five off of this, or whether that'll mean I'll have to jack the heck out of the bridge, which I don't want to do, because the higher you set the bridge, the less stable it is, so lower is better. Let me uh, find a bit of wood. Okay, I found this thing. It's the same thickness as the material under this, so let's see what we get here. That's not bad. It's only about maybe a yeah. Actually, it'll fit under the fretboard there, and yeah, it's maybe a mil, half a mil thicker than the action is at the twenty fourth fret. So. <coughs> yeah, scratchy throat. So I'm thinking it's probably safe to take the bottom off this. I think we'll try that, see what happens. Be right back. I thought you might get a kick out of this. I don't know if the phone's going to pick it up or not, but...
think it heard that. Yeah, I'm actually tempted to double check the tuning on this thing, pick it up and play it just the way it is, even with the action messed up, and I haven't taken the stuff out from under the bridge. Cause it's already starting to sound pretty, so I'll be back. Okay, let's see what happens here. Can you see this? Yeah, you can see that. All right, so take our bridge out. And bring it around here so I can see what the camera sees. If you look at the bridge, you'll see we've got a yeah, see a little bit of a gap right here and right here because it's an arch top. And remember, I only put just a touch of glue at the two ends. And I was talking earlier about possibly popping it off. So let's see if I was if I was thinking ahead and I was a Boy Scout and this works. This is like, you know, in frame. <laughs> love it. I love it. Did the camera catch that? Oh yeah, that's in frame. Cool. Yeah, sweet. Alright, now let's see what we got. Now we give a man some fighting room. Bridge and reinsert. Ah, just like that. Sweet. Okay, cool. And what's our action? Oh my god. Check this out. This probably is not quite tuned again now that I moved the bridge it's probably flat but yeah check this out our action is right around and we probably got about maybe a mil on number one we got Maybe two on number six. So, yeah, so we're looking pretty good here. Looking pretty good. I can get some feeler gauges and stuff on it. But first step will be to get it back into proper tune. Notice, oops, there goes the tuner. Um, if you look down here, you'll see that the strings are actually trying to go down. And, yep, we're touching a block here now. So... Yeah, we just lowered the bridge, so all these strings want to sit lower now, and we're hitting the back of the block. Um, probably a good idea to take that down some. Ah, God's in the details, right? Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to have to loosen all the strings up, get them out of the way. And then, hmm, I need a nice, maybe the Shinto. I'm just going to double it with the Shinto. That might be the most straightforward approach. I mean, you know, you can like do notches with a Dremel. Or, you know, other carvy fancy kind of stuff, I guess, maybe. But how much angle do we need here? We don't really... Well, let's see. If you were going straight, but the the rollers can't go any lower than... Where's my finger? Get in the camera. Yeah, if you went straight from the bridge to the tuner, the, you still can't go any lower than where the bottom of the pin is for the rollers and the block so 
really like let me push this one down on yeah that's down all the way pretty much so just a straight line from the tuner there so really you don't only get a you only got to take just a little bit off the edge, back edge here, and they should all clear then. So, yeah, I'm thinking Shinto Rasp might be the best approach. Biggest pain is i got to get all the strings out of the way, so. Let me uh, get to that. I'll be back. Actually, according to this, I'm at around 30 minutes, which is plenty long enough for an episode. I'm not lying to try to be episodic or anything but this is Rome wasn't built in a day right okay so I'm gonna end it here for now and I guess in the beginning of the next one I'll be uh, getting these strings out of the way so that I can knock down the back edge of that block so until then everybody have a good one